Hello, this lecture is the last lecture of this course. Today, we're going to learn about PyTorch. In this lecture, we will learn the basic syntax of PyTorch. PyTorch is an open source machine learning library built using the syntax of Torch. PyTorch supports GPU acceleration, just like TensorFlow or Theano. Currently, PyTorch is being developed primarily by researchers at Facebook AI Research. PyTorch provides C++ and Python language versions, and in this time, we will learn how to use Python-based PyTorch. Torch is an open-source machine learning library written in programming language called Lua. Currently, it is not further being developed and PyTorch was newly developed based on Torch's design. Now, let's install PyTorch. First, if you have an active conda environment, deactivate it with conda deactivate command, and create a conda virtual environment called PyTorch env by fixing the Python version to 3.8 as follows. Then, activate the virtual environment and install PyTorch by entering the command below. This command works on computers with NVIDIA GPU devices. For more detailed installation instructions, please refer to the following link. In this lecture, we will build a CIFAR 10 classifier with PyTorch. And in the implementation process, I will explain how PyTorch works and its basic syntax. By learning how to implement the model we designed in the previous lectures, we will learn how to use PyTorch. The first thing to do is prepare the training data for the neural network. Prepare a code file called cfar10pytorch.py and add the code that will be described from now on. First, to use PyTorch, you need to import several modules. Write the following code in your code file. Let me show you the data preprocessing code first. First, add the following code below the part importing the module. The full code is also available on the course page. PyTorch provides the ability to download popular datasets like Keras. CFAR10 can also be downloaded. The CFAR10 data provided by PyTorch is a pillow image data type. However, in PyTorch, the pillow image data type cannot be used for model training and inference. To solve this problem, PyTorch provides a parameter called transform when downloading a dataset. A class instance called compose can be passed as an argument to the transform parameter. When initializing a compose class instance, you can pass a list as an argument. In our code, there is an element called toTensor in the list. If this element is added when initializing the compose instance, the CFAR10 data is converted to a type called torch.floatTensor. In PyTorch, unlike Keras, the data must be converted to a data type of PyTorch before it can be used in the model. Let's take a look at the code that loads the dataset. First, let's check the code that prepares the training data. This code means that a folder called data is created in the location where the code file is executed and CFAR10 training data is downloaded into that folder. Also, the downloaded data is loaded and returned based on the compose instance entered in the transform parameter. Let's also look at the code that loads the test data. In the previous line, the download parameter was set to true. When the line that loads the training data is executed, a folder called data is created in the folder where the code is executed and the entire CFAR10 data is downloaded. 
At this time, since the test data is also downloaded, there is no need to set the download parameter to true anymore. Instead, we need to load test data, not training data, so the argument of the train parameter must be false. PyTorch supports GPU acceleration. Whether the computer supports GPU acceleration can be checked with the isAvailable function. The next line specifies the device used to load the model. The data loader is responsible for breaking the data into batches. If you pass the float tensor data as an argument and set batch size, data loader loads batch size data to the device at a time. The num workers parameter is set to zero by default. This parameter should be set to 1 if GPU acceleration is available. The pin memory parameter must also be set to true when using GPU acceleration. Today, we will build a neural network to classify CIFAR10 images with PyTorch, and we plan to make the same neural network we designed with Keras in Lecture 9 with PyTorch this time. The neural network we designed with Keras in Lecture 9 is as follows. Now, let's see how to implement this neural network in PyTorch. In PyTorch, you need to create the neural network as a class. And the neural network class should inherit from torch.nn.module. Also in PyTorch, model training or inference can be performed by implementing a separate function outside the class. First, try adding the following class to cfar 10 pytorchpy If you look at the code, you can see that, unlike Keras, you have to prepare the layers in the initializer, and then connect these layers again in the forward method. I set the neural network class name to net. The torch.nn module contains various layers and classes used to implement neural networks. torchnn.module is the parent class of all neural network classes. In order to implement a neural network with PyTorch, this class must be inherited when defining a model. The initializer of the PyTorch neural network class is responsible for preparing the necessary layers for the model. It is not possible to design the model by implementing only this method, and the process of connecting layers in the for method is required. When image data enters the model, this data first goes through the convolutional layer. Since CIFAR10 is RGB color image data, the value of in channels of nn.conf2d must be set to 3. You can think of out channels of nn.conf2d as same parameters as filters of conf2d of Keras. Unlike Keras, in PyTorch, a two dimensional kernel with the same width and height is automatically created, even if you put a constant in kernel size. Like convolutional 2D layer, pool size is automatically converted to two dimensions in nn.maxpool2d, even if it is entered as a number. nn.linear is used to implement a fully connected layer or an activation layer. Think of it like a dense layer in Keras. The input to this layer must be one-dimensional, so if you want to pass two-dimensional data to this layer, you have to flatten the data like Keras. However, unlike Keras, flattened layers are added in the forward method. In the code after flattening, the input shape to the linear layer is set to 512. It's a bit complicated to explain why this number came up. In Keras, if you specify only the input shape of the first layer, the input shape of the next layer is automatically set. 
but in PyTorch, you must specify the input shape of all layers. Fortunately, even if you do not know the input shape of the linear layer, after flattening, there are ways to know this number. Now, I will explain how to figure out which number to put in in features of the first linear layer. First of all, you can put a random value in in features. If you put a random natural number in in features and run the program, the program prints an error log. If the in features value of the linear layer is not appropriate, the shape of the matrix is printed before the last AND as shown on the screen. The value in front of AND is the output shape of the flattened layer we want to find, so you can set this value as the input shape of the linear layer. The second is to utilize Keras. If we design a model in Keras and call the model.summary method, we can check the output shape of the flattened layer. This shape becomes the input shape of the next layer, so you can put it as the in features value of the PyTorch linear layer. In PyTorch, when defining a neural network class, you need to define how each layer is connected in a method call for it. I will continue the explanation after showing the code of the forward method once again. Check out the forward method. Unlike Keras, each layer in PyTorch is passed as an argument to the activation function. You can think of the X parameter of forward as an input. When the input of the first convolutional layer comes in, the output of the convolutional layer goes back to a rectifier function. After that, the value goes into the pooling layer, and the value from the pooling layer is used as an input for the next convolutional layer. The torch.flatten function is used to change the dimension of the input data to one dimension. Think of it as the same as Keras's flattened layer. Model training in PyTorch is more complex than in Keras. PyTorch gives programmers more freedom than Keras in the process of customizing a model, but it requires programmers to write a larger amount of code. If you look at the code, the next class instance defined earlier is initialized, and the to method in it is called. Also, the optimizer of the model is initialized separately. After that, model training is performed by calling a separate function called train, and model device, train loader, and optimizer are all passed to this function. After adding the following code to our code file, let's look at the train function. This code means that we initialize the neural network class we designed and load this neural network into the device where we'll train. Before training a model, you must load the model. The torch.optim module contains various optimizers. As in implementing the CFAR10 classifier in Keras, we will use the Atom optimizer function. And when initializing the optimizer, the parameters method of the model instance must be passed as an argument. Now, try adding the train function to a code file. You can see that the 50 you wrote down when calling the train function is the epic value. In the train function, the models method model.train is called first. Unlike Keras's model.fit, this function is not a function that starts training. Calling model.train means putting the model into training mode, and backpropagation can be done after this code is called. In the next line, the code repeats for epic. Since one epic is to train on the entire training data given to train loader, as shown in line 34, training data is assigned to a data variable on a batch-by-batch -batch basis. The data in line 34 is the input, and the target is the correct answer. 
In line 35, tensor data given in batches is loaded into the training device. The code in line 36 is a function that initializes the gradient values calculated when back propagation is performed. When you put an input into the model, the model returns an output. That means that forward propagation is performed. After that, the gradient is obtained by comparing the output with the target, and the weight of the model must be adjusted during the back propagation. The negative log likelihood loss function is the same as the sparse categorical cross entropy loss function in Keras. By getting output and target as arguments, this function calculates the loss. Based on the obtained loss, we can find the gradient. The loss.backward method is a function that finds the gradient. The optimizer.step method is a function that updates the weights of the neural network, and it calculates the weights of the neural network based on the gradient obtained through loss.backward. In conclusion, the code we wrote is a code that trains the neural network for 50 epochs using Atom Optimizer. And now, let's evaluate the performance of the model. In PyTorch, evaluating the performance of a model is also more complex than in Keras. Add the test function call part shown at the bottom to the code file. The image classification task evaluates the model's performance with accuracy. When an input is given to the model, an output comes out. This value is compared with the correct answer to obtain the correct rate. In PyTorch, the programmer must write this code. Now, add the test function to your code file. Model.eval is a function that changes the mode of the model, like model.train. When the model.eval function is called, the model changes into inference mode. We will use the correct variable to count the number of correct answers. When using the model in inference mode, add the code in line 45. This is because there's no need to obtain the gradient value when the model is not being trained. After that, the process of finding the output is same as the train function. However, the output is converted by calling the argmax function once again. This is because as in Keras, you need to find the index where the largest number exists so that you can compare it with the correct number. After that, in the 50th line, the loop is executed. For each test image, if the correct answer is the same as the value the model inferred, the value of correct is increased by 1. When the inference for the entire test data is complete, the correct value is divided by the size of the entire test data then multiply by 100 to get the accuracy. In conclusion, the test function can be called by passing model, device, and test loader as arguments. If you train the model and call the test function, you can see that 66.26% accuracy is printed to the console. This concludes the Introduction to Deep Learning course. Congratulations! In the next course, we will learn how to build an object detection AI.